Welcome everyone to, um, again, the most boring panel you'll ever see this convention. This is going to be the energy. I am sorry. <laughs> um, it's going to be rather chill. And we're just going to like talk about poetry a little. And hopefully you will be open to trying your hand to writing poetry with me for during the panel. The ideal is that we'll get to two of them. Uh, before we start, I did title our panel specifically because of a specific game that you may see a specific cosplayer who's sitting amongst the crowd is dressed up as. Has Can I get a show of hands if anybody has played Doki Doki Literature Club? Oh, okay. Thank you. So Doki Doki Literature Club is a technically a horror game. So if you're not into that, maybe just go read a summary. <laughs> Um, but it does bring a lot about literature and writing out to everyone. And I felt like it gave a really good message. And it's something that I want to repeat or just discuss more in, uh, today. Okay. Um, when it comes to literature, I feel like a lot of us have gotten on, off to, on the wrong foot with them. Like literature, writing, poetry, it feels like something that's really sophisticated or difficult. But for those of us who have seen the DLC, that's not true. So for today and for this hour, I just want us to like use poetry or writing in general as a way to express ourselves in ways that we verbally cannot. As someone personally who has trouble expressing herself through words to everyone, writing is usually the way I prefer. And that is the most eloquent you will hear me today because I actually wrote that bit down. All right, uh, so referring to PowerPoint here, uh, I'm sorry, I am i didn't introduce myself. I am Zane, I am a Twitch streamer, a VTuber. Um, I also upload VODs onto YouTube and such. If you'd like to check me out, I would greatly appreciate it. If not, that's totally okay. Um, I teach English over here in Hong Kong. I used to just teach English normally and just as to kids, to adults, but then I had to supply for English literature, and then I realized that, hey, I could be paid on the clock to read a book and then teach it. So I'm like, sure, why not? Okay, um, over here in Hong Kong, we have something called appreciation. I'm not sure how that works over there, if or if you guys have it. Appreciation of poetry or literature is where we read a piece and then we try to identify different figurative languages or literary devices in it. We're not going to go that deep because I just want this to be a poetry 101. So, but we are going to read some poems. <laughs> I have gotten some from poets. I have gotten some from Doki Doki Literature Club so that we can see uh, the many different styles of writing, and that all of them can be considered poetry. Oh, why is the PowerPoint looking terrible? Well, it'll have to look terrible. Okay. Um, would I have any volunteers to try to read the one on the right after I read the one on the left? So the one on the left I will be reading is Desert Places, and the one I would like in volunteer from the crowd audience to read is Eagles Can Fly. Can I get a volunteer before I start? Yes? Okay, thank you, Monica. I will go first then. All right, so this one is by Robert Frost. It's called Desert Places. It's been a while since I read this. I apologize if I stumble. Okay. Snow falling and night falling fast. Oh, fast. In a field, I looked into going past and the ground almost covered smooth and snow, but a few weeds and stubble showing last. The woods around it have it. It is theirs. All animals are smothered in their lairs. I am too absent-spirited to count. The loneliness includes me unawares. And lonely as it is, that loneliness will be more lonely ere it will be less. A blanker whiteness of benighted snow with no expression nothing to express. 
They cannot scare me with their empty spaces between stars on stars where no human race is. I have it in me so much near home to scare myself with my own desert places. Robert Frost. That was that one. All right, Monica, can you help me with Eagles Can Fly? There's a microphone at the front of the room that has like a purple tip and I can hear you that way. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I can't really see the poem though. <laughs> okay, there we Apologies. go. Apologies. <laughs> okay. Okay. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. By Natsuki. Thank you very much. Arigato. And thank you for the clapping for Miss Monica. Um, as we can see, these are two very vastly different styles of poems. One's much more simple, and one relies a lot more on imagery, and it's like trying to describe a lot of things. Yes, imagery is using words to paint an image, basically. But yeah, these are all poems. I have one more set of poems I would like to share with everyone before we go on to explaining some very basic figurative languages and literary devices, some that you might actually already know, especially for those who came to our escape room the last two days. All right, this one, uh, there's Crossing the Water over there by Sylvia Plath that I will read. And then there's one called Take My Hand by Sayori, who is also from the game of Doki Doki Literature Club. Is there any other volunteer who can help me with the poem on the right yes thank you oh you would like to go first go uh, no, i'm ah. just getting ready i'm just getting ready you're getting ready oh okay then i will go first then thank you very much uh, small disclaimer i'm dyslexic so i might have a little trouble reading it no just worries it no worries at all okay crossing the water black lake black boat two black cut paper people where do the black trees go that drink here? Their shadows must cover Canada. A little light is flittering from the water flowers. Their leaves do not wish us hurry. They are round and flat and full of dark advice. Cold worlds shake from the oar. The spirit of blackness is in us. It is in the fishes. A snag is lifting a valedictory. Pale hand. Stars open among the lilies. Are you not blinded by such expressionless sirens? This is the silence of astounded souls. Sylvia Plath. All right, sir, if you'd like, take my hand. Not literally. You can't. My hand's like down there. Bad. Okay. <laughs> take my hand. Take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints climb the stairs ahead of me while i look up to you the more i look forward the more i look up the more i can lend to you <laughs> uh if you can trust me to follow your pace i'll trust you to set it if you can trust me to lend me you a, uh, to trust me to lend you a smile I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Yes, sorry. Thank you very much. I'm going to actually take a sip. Sorry, I have been talking all day. <clears throat> so those were the poems that I wanted to show us today. Desert Places, Eagles Can Fly, Crossing the Water, and Take My Hand. They are all quite different, and they all express their own meanings in some more subtle ways or some more obvious ways. Now that that's done, I would like to briefly and very quickly go over some basic literary and figurative language, because when we do writing, I would like you to try to use one or two of these. All right, first off, 
I am would like to repeat that I am a teacher and I apologize that my panel is like a lesson. Okay, <laughs> first off, simile. We use like, the word like or as, to compare things. My example here is her attitude is as cold as ice. We use as to compare her attitude and ice being like really cold. Then we have metaphor. It is also used to compare something, but it doesn't use like or as. So in the same meaning as above, I want to like expre blah, 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 express that someone's really cold towards you. I'm really like, she's an icicle. Dep depending on how the person takes it, they could think like, oh, she's really cold. Maybe she needs a coat or like she's her personality is really cold. Moving on, alliteration. Oh, and if anybody has a question, just come up to the microphone. I totally don't mind. We have alliteration. That is multiple same sounds in the same sentence. I got a lot of people questioning or asking if that was like a tongue twister. And I guess a lot, of, a lot of tongue twisters use alliteration in it. Like this one that I'll try, I guess. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. The alliteration here is the P sound because it's repeated a lot. There's actually quite a few categories within the alliteration, like assonance and consonance, which is more detailed, but we're just gonna focus on alliteration in general. Well, the last one on this page is hyperbole, which is an exaggeration. Like, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. That too is also an idiom, but it's also an exaggeration, the hyperbole. All right, very quickly, the last ones, personification. So you, if we look at the word, that's like personification. So it's like giving a non-living thing human qualities, like time waits for no one. The sun smiles at you. So time and the sun cannot do things that I just said, as they're not people. So giving them human qualities is personification. Then we hear a lot of noise words, especially, or see a lot of noise words, especially in comics and such, like bang, crash, pop. These are onomatopoeia or noise words. And then earlier in Robert Frost's poem, we saw, I mentioned something about imagery. That's basically, again, using words to try to paint a picture that you can see when you close your eyes, using words like that. And I don't think I need to explain rhyme and foreshadowing, but I did mention those down here in case they were ones you wanted to try in your writing. All right, before we move on, do we have any questions regarding these literary devices and figurative languages? No. Okay. I assume no. In the tiny little window that I see you. All right. With that, let's get writing. Do our well. You can. I suppose you can write on your phone if you'd like to type. Or I don't know if our staff has any paper and pens slash pencils for you. But I would like to guide you through our first topic first. And then our second topic, I would let go and let you guys do something more, uh, whatever you guys want. <laughs> All right. So our topic one that I would like to hold you, hold your hands through. All right. I would like you to try to describe an emotion or all of your emotions, like happiness, sadness, anger, whichever, with tangible things. Because sometimes our emotions are difficult to express, but understanding ourselves and our emotions is a very good way to understand ourselves oh gosh i'm repeating myself okay our goal is around 10 lines and i want you to use two basic literary devices or figurative language that we mentioned ab above if you need me to go back to the pages i am happy to so that you can see the examples again so i have some examples here whoops i clicked into it like happiness is like a molten lava cake. That's something tangible, something you can eat. It's sweet and warm in my chest. That's a simile because we're using like over there. Or I can say happiness is a rainbow, which is a metaphor because I'm saying it is that instead of it is like that. Happiness is a rainbow running across the cloudy skies and dispersing them into a bright new day. 
So happiness, of course, cannot run. So by saying that happiness is running, it is personification. Mm, yes. All right. I would ideally like to give you guys 10 to 20 minutes to try to do those 10 lines. And I too will pull up something and try to write within the time so that we're all limited in this little time to write something. Though they are busy writing, they'll stop it. Though, what are you doing? No. It's alright, Bo. Um, I feel like everybody is bad at writing. Especially when it's 4 a.m. over here in Hong Kong. Uh, writing can be terrible. Uh, nowhere east. Oh goodness, I choked. Just do what you can and it's not really, it's not really, it's not a competition. Today I just really wanted to encourage everyone to just try. So it's totally okay. I think I might have to stop us here. How is everybody going? Yeah? Okay. I see some okays. In that case, uh, you might have already seen my example, but I will still share it with you as our first example. So again, I chose happiness and only happiness. Well, not really, uh, but it's super subtle. <laughs> Not super. Well, you know, I'll just read it. Okay, Zane, be quiet. Ahem. Happiness. Happiness is a shadow. It follows you around like the ever-present time. Should you look for it, you'll only catch a fleeting glimpse. But from time to time, it's clear as day. What is happiness but a reflection on a bright, sunny day? I realize I tried to rhyme day with day, and that looks so bad. Uh... Okay, I will cringe at myself later. Does anyone wish to share their uh, little happiness poem? Or, sorry, their poem about emotions. Yes, I will accept any and all people who wish to share. Oh. Uh, oh, I hope it, everything's okay. Um... You can come up to the microphone if you'd like to share. The microphone at the front. Yes, thank you. Woo! All right, so my poem is about happiness. Happiness is a drunken brew. It sneaks through what I listen to and gives me vigor throughout the night to dance and make my soul anew. I love that. That was very, that was very pretty. I love the rhyme. I love the metaphors and the imagery of like the night. Like I could see like just people or perhaps a single person going out to in very late at night, just having something to drink. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my poem is called Love Error. Hmm. Love is like a knife through the heart. I twist it further into myself. Your love is a noose that keeps me hanging on the edge. I cannot exist without your love. I download the file to your heart, but cannot open it. My safe state is filled with memories of you, but you delete them with no thought. And your reality, am I the one you long for? Or was my love all but an error? Oh my goodness gracious, that is entirely on brand for Monica. Thank you so much. I I think I got really lost, not, not in a bad way, like a really mesmerized by your poem that I didn't note down what sort of literary devices you used. I just started listening and then I was like, this is really awesome. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to share your poem with me? Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, so it's not done. I got I need okay. some more lines, but this is what I have so far. Uh, I did all the emotions. Mm. Uh, our emotions is like 
the colors waves of light, our rage that explodes like the crimson flame, our smile that leads uh, to our happiness that shines like the bright yellow sun, our tears that run down our face sparkle like the Silurian sun, our anxiety that creeps down our spine like an indigo shadow, our surprise that's encased in a green flash of lightning, and our embarrassment that turns our skin into a violet shade of purple. And that's what I have so far. Yay! Thank you so much for sharing. That's very nice. I really loved how you had a motif of colors that you repeatedly used. There were lots of imagery, like, and the strong usage of words, like when you, especially when you performed it. Everybody seemed to like it a lot too. Thank you very much. Is there any? Yes, I see you. Our minds like glass, fragile and frail, under too much stress can fall and break. When the time comes and chaos is rising, will the right decisions be the ones you make? Our mind is sea, desolate and deep, holding many thoughts, some bad and good. But when the time comes and the thoughts cause a fog, those emotions will twist, feelings misunderstood. Don't let those thoughts overwhelm and change you. Come to terms with it, overcome, and break through. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I felt like I could have heard that poem as like an opening song. It, it felt like the, like a lyrics from like an, like an anime or something. I really liked uh, a lot of your imagery. The, the, theme itself, the theme itself is about stress and how it affects hmm. the mind. Oh, so a stress. I think your fav my favorite line in that was desolate and deep, the usage of that alliteration there. Thank you very much. The line of our mind is see desolate and deep. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Or should we move? Oh, no, 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 go for it. Yes, please, both of you, one by one. Okay. Um, it's called bittersweet. Mm. Bittersweet is the feeling when I look upon you, lovers separated by fate, always just out of reach, like the cheerful sun and sorrowful moon. Happily we exchange laughter and loving gazes, yet sadly we recall such joy is only an echo. Hope and despair ebb and flow like the tide, but in the end I shall cherish our fleeting time. When I see my reflection in your smiling eyes, my heart is bittersweet. Thank you. Thank you, Yuna. I am going to cry about Final Fantasy all over again. That was wonderful. I am sorry. Once again, I started listening to your poem instead of being a teacher and noting things down. That was very lovely. Thank you very much. Yes, we have one more person in the mic, please. Yeah, it's just a simple one. It's about high no happiness. happiness is like a candle burning bright and warm and comforting until it burns out. But don't despair for darkness is an opportunity to find joy again. For in the darkness, the wax can be molded. It can burn again when the fire is right. Yay, thank you. I like that too. Everybody, of course, has their own style when it comes to poetry. There is no right or wrong. And... If people try to tell you otherwise, they're wrong. <laughs> okay. Don't... Warm. Yes, I do like how you compared happiness to a candle and gave it like a little reality check, like, oh, it burns out, because that was something I wanted to bring out in my very short poem as well. And after hearing everyone, I would like to give you all, and for all of you to give yourselves a big round of applause, like once again, thank you very much. That was great. And I had something to say and I completely forgot. This is why I write stuff down. All right. Um, I really can't remember. Okay. Thank you for that. That was on emotion and happiness. All oh, right. That's what I was going to say. I felt. And now I feel really bad that I rushed out mine because all of yours sounded so much better and so much nicer than mine. Okay, it 
thought if you'd like, we might have to speed run a little on the second one. But I do kind of have a topic. But on the other hand, I see that we have some veterans here. So if you'd like, you can choose your own topic for topic number two. Or you can take a gander at the topic that I was going to suggest for like basically the same thing using tangible things, using our five senses, using imagery to describe something that you like, perhaps a favorite series, a character, something in your life. Or again, since there are some wonderful veterans here, if you'd like to use your own topic, I am more than happy to hear it. It looks like Twitch chat also very much enjoyed all of your poems. We are slightly short on time, so I think I'll have to stop you guys here. Are we okay with that? Mm, lovely. Um, I also just wrote something really short and really brief. as well. I felt like this time I didn't need too many lines to express what I wanted to. But I am now feeling slightly shy. <laughs> it's all right. This is for a show called uh, Kakiro Project, or I believe they had a very terrible anime adaptation called Mikakushi the Actors. Um, does anybody know it? Kakiro Project? Yay! Thank you. Okay. Um, in that series or show, uh, Ayano was my favorite character, so I just wrote a little something about her mostly, but also about the show itself. Tateyama Ayano. The crimson rages, her tears fall. In the haze, her tears unheard, the snakes plot. Her tears dry, the numbers fall. But zero is never ending. Um, I can explain just a little, so to give slightly more context, um, Crimson and the Haze is like a thing within the show. Snakes are the antagonist. Um, numbers being the other characters. And Zero being Ayano herself. I think that is okay on context. Okay. Um, does anybody wish to share? I will grant you the floor to upstage me once again. Yay, thank you! Alright, this one is called Take Me to Heaven. Mm -hmm. Lead me through the glassy gates to explore inside and see what waits. As I rise up the onyx stairs, a place to retire my troubles and scares brings itself into view. This is heaven, a hotel of stars, of merchants, travel travelers, warriors, and czars. The angels are guides as wondrous as day, lead us sporting wings of EVA. Give me the music, the crowds, the fans. To us, God himself has outstretched his hand and given us this paradise to stay and celebrate our passions in harmony. Thank you, that was great. I have one question though. I apologize, I am not hip. I am a, I am a literature teacher. Uh, what is EVA? Um, EVA is a type of foam, usually used for like floor mats or whatever. And um, a lot of a lot of cosplayers will use it to make armor or just various stuff. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, I love it. You really know how to use your rhyme and imagery. Oh. That was awesome. Thank you My very mom much. Is also an English teacher, so yeah. Ah, no wonder. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, please. I, 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 I do not. I, I, I just think that this is a beautiful poem. I do not know a, uh, a name or or what it's about. I, I have not thought about that. But, but, but I think it's a goodish poem. So I'd like to read it. Yes, please. And, and and if you have something that, that it could be about, then please tell me. <laughs> okay. The, the sun is bright and so is the night. I, n not the same amount of light, but you, you can sight the light. Have fun day and night. 
because each second is a beautiful sight. Yay, thank you. That was lovely. Thank you for getting the courage to come up and read it as well. See, everybody I think likes it too. Lovely, thank you very much. Hmm, I will have to think about if anything I can think of relates to that. Okay, so I call this the Golden Emperor. This is based off of my favorite scene from my favorite show of all time. Hmm. Uh, with one slash from a wild grizzly with claws that shatter like glass, this shy rose will explode from a supernova into a golden moon. This golden emperor will use his newfound passion to send that beast back to the prismatic cathedral. Both the emperor and the beast's souls will be awakened by the sounds of a violin. As the seconds tick down for the beast, he will raise his uh, he will crawl his way back to his favorite honey tree, raising his claws into the bright yellow sun, but soon dropping, breaking like glass when he sees the golden moon. Wow, thank you. I don't think I know it, but when you mentioned like emperor, golden, I was, and roses, I instantly thought fate because I'm a big fate fan. I thought like narrow, but would you like to tell us what it was supposed to be about? Uh, it's from a show called Comrade or Kiva. This scene comes from episode 24 uh, when uh, Kiva unlocks his uh, final form known as Emperor. And the color scheme is gold. And the Ooh. monster he's fighting is a stained glass vampire grizzly bear. I see. That's wonderful. Thank you for the explanation. I don't think I've seen that show. <laughs> it, it's live action, so probably not. Uh, mm -mm. uh still. Staff, do we have time for one last person? Hopefully. Okay, I see nobody coming up to stop me. Okay. Uh, okay, so mine is based off of Apollo Justice from the Ace Attorney series. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, there you go. A brutal red amid a blue history. A new beginning from a bitter past. A story of love slipping through like silk that never lasts. From glacial ma manipulated truth and embers of well-meaning deception, a new legacy finds its home in peace built from desperation. That's wonderful. Thank you. I have seen his attorney, so I do have a kind of understanding of what was going on there. I loved your usage of rhyme in uh, your poem as well. I did like you hinting back to Phoenix with the blue as well. Does, uh, unless we get, we get, we're getting stopped. I think someone else also wanted to share theirs. Yeah, please. It's totally okay. Uh, uh, okay. So am I supposed to say the character or the title? Uh, whichever, if you have a title for it, I would love to hear your title as well. Uh, well, I'll just go. Yeah, I call this the storm. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. He was the coolest man I've ever seen before his appearance turned into a meme. Sweet like chocolate, but rare like vanilla. You have to pay twice to play this stylish killer. I try to bury the light like a veil of mist, but he keeps appearing on my recommended list. So I will weather the storm that is approaching, praying that he is more than a meme. Thank you. Wow, we have seen many, many different styles of poetry today. We have seen um, more realistic and realism or like close to the heart, like, well, how do I say it? Like from the mouth, from the gentleman there, I really liked the line there of burying the light and we also saw a lot of i thought let me very quickly move away from this terrible poem of mine <laughs> um to say really figurative really Im lots of imagery i really thank you everyone for coming and for writing poems with me for sharing them because lord knows I still have trouble sharing my thoughts with everyone. 
So thank you. Once again, I would like to give you guys a round of applause from me personally. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I believe this is going to be it. We, if I believe we might get kicked out if we extend too long. But that is going to be it for the poetry panel today. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for writing and for sharing it with me. I was amazed by all of you. There was no bad poems. And there will be no bad poems. So as long as you're doing your best to write. Thank you for coming.